think the first thing you have to do is identify who the high potential talent is. I don't know what you think, Des, but yeah, I agree. you've got to go through quite a, a rigorous process of establishing what the criteria you measure people by are, and then you have to take them through that process. So when everybody looks at those people, they all agree they are the high potential people. Uh, once you've done that, I think it's very much around trying to tailor uh, the development of those individuals around the context of your organisation. So you have to understand the nature of your business, what's important, and you have to be able to formulate the right type of training to actually accommodate those people to make them successful in your business. And I think there's two things I'd add to that. One is kind of class is permanent, form is temporary. So don't judge them on their short-term performance. We all make mistakes. Yeah. If they're good, you're putting them in difficult assignments and they'll be stretched by those. So there'll be times when they struggle. And I think the second thing is you've got to actively manage their careers. That means you do have to push them to take risks. And they're the ones who are taking the biggest risks because they're the ones whose career we're working with. But you support them through that. I think you said a very interesting point there as well. Des. We all go through this. Those of us who are lucky to have uh, you know, built good careers, you know, we've all gone through periods where somebody's looked after us, somebody's cared for us. You know, we've all made mistakes and, and somebody's said, you know, what have you learned from it? Now, come on, let's move on from it. Well, uh, even better, I can remember a boss of mine giving me a job and actually saying, there's just one piece of bad news, you can't do this job yet, but we'll help you. And that's, that, that works for me, and that's what I've tried to do for others. Mm. I think the first thing that anybody has to be able to do is to understand their business. They've got to be hold, the way I describe it, they've got to, be able to hold their own around the boardroom table, discuss the real critical things that matter in a business with their colleagues, but bring their HR skills to bear. I think there's a yin and a yang of HR actually, I think there's courage and empathy, right? You, you've got to be a very courageous person to have a good career in HR because you have to do some pretty tough things on occasions uh, and you have to be able to do them maybe when you know, it's unpopular or you know, it's, it's not what you want to do but you have to do it because it's the right thing to do. But you also have to have empathy because it's very easy just to be a tough nut and we've all worked with HR people who just you know, pride themselves on being hard Actually, that's not that difficult to do, you know, just to be a tough nut's easy. The empathy side, you have to feel what the other people feel and you have to be able to put yourself in their shoes. And if you can get that balance between being empathetic but not going too far, so you get the Stockholm Syndrome, and being courageous but not too far, so you're just some type of bully boy, actually you can get yourself into a really good place where people will trust you and they respect you. You know, I talk to my guys a lot about who speaks for our people and I think that's a role for HR to fulfil. Still, it might be a bit old fashioned but I still think it's imperative we do it.